Hi everybody, so welcome back to my channel. So, today we're going to be talking about sewing machines and which sewing machine is the best for um, students. So I'm going to start talking about a little bit in general and then we're going to go in details on the sewing machines so that way you will be able to make the right choice for you. So, um, I first going to be talking a little bit about my history with sewing machines so you will understand I may not be an expert but I know a um, couple things about sewing machines so that way you should be able to um, figure out what is your needs and all that kind of stuff and move on on that. So, the first thing that you need to know is um, what, what are you going to do with the sewing machine? what is for the sewing machine so their sewing machine they're specialized on um like leather like walking foot machines those one is a specialized in leather so you don't want to get those type of machines for sewing clothes i mean it's too powerful it's, it's too much for what you're looking for um you need to know exactly how big it is because not everybody have a huge space for it. You need to counting about all that. Um, for example, when I started, I started with um, a small table sewing machine. I'm talking about 1998, around that time, 1997. I was 12 years old around that. When I get my first sewing machine, um, that one, well, I, I didn't get it. I was able to use it because there was a, um, a sewing machine called Invencedora, which is the one that had the pedal. So you have to pedal in order to use the sewing machine. So I have to use that one. That was my first sewing machine. That was my neighbor. He allowed me to use it. And I learned to sewing with that sewing machine. So um, I know everybody, um, have that experience to have somebody who can explain to you or somebody who can help you to um, learn and and achieve the experience um, in those high machines because not everybody have those high machines. So the first, the let's say the, my first first sewing machine that I have it was two. It was a brother. It was all metal, but I remember the name of that one. And what um, the first one that I bought with my own money was the um, Nechi, 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 um, the five three five um, seven four seven eight seven four something like that. I will put the name down below so you guys know what I'm talking about. That was the first toy machine that I bought with my own money that I remember. I bought that machine as used. I went with one of my friends to a um, palm shop. I don't know if you guys read or know what it is. I will put the description was a palm shop. So I went to this palm shop and get it. So I know some people can get sewing machine from family members, people that you know they don't they they do have one in the basement and don't use it, or your grandma not sewing um, anymore and things like that. So you can ask for your family members and people in your family to know who have a sewing machines they're not used and you can start with that. The best sewing machine is gonna be whatever you get for free and it works. So that was my first started with sewing machine, was first the Vencedora, the singer, the one with the pedal, the Nechi, uh, the brother, and then when I have more money, I was able to buy the um, brother X, um, the brother XL 2001 or something like that. Um, 2600 I, I think is the name of that one. So that was the second one, let's say that I bought new. So I put, I make a video about that one a long time ago. Um, Cause that's the one that normally I use to give it away for you guys. That's the one that I normally do. Um, I have that one, I use it, it's the best one I ever seen for beginners. It's super convenient, lightweight, cheap, can work nicely on a table. So for me that 
is the best way you can start with small, cheap, and easy to use machines. But whatever you can get, that's gonna be the best one. My best advice for anybody who get those type of machines, given by family members and people like that, is learn uh, the whole manual. Understand your whole machines. Read about it. Google it. Try to find more information. Because some machines are picky to work, but if you understand it and know how it works, they will be the best machine you can ever have because nobody really understands and just you. So the next question will be um, the budget. So what is your budget? How much money you really can put on this? And this will depend on many factors. I, um, I make the money for my machine by back in the day I was uh, cleaning, <laughs> helping people that I know that would pay me for cleaning. I was, I'm talking about I was under age, under 16, so cleaning, um, I was babysitting kids, that was another way I was able to make some money. I was also um, helping people in general, they asked me in the building or places like that, um, can you help me with this, I will give you five, ten, whatever, and I was saving the money. And then another one you can use is asking to your parents or asking to your uncle, asking to your auntie, somebody that you feel comfortable asking for money or somebody that you feel will be more than happy to support you and help you with that. That is what I did when I was underage. After I was 16, I was able to work and I started working. So I was saving, no joke, ten five dollars every single paycheck that I got from McDonald's. Um, I was saving every paycheck to buy my own machine and that's the way I started to buy my own machines, the better ones. Um, back in the early 2000s, there were no many sewing machines with many different features. So it was pretty much basic, um, different um, top stitch, no more than 10 or something like that. And the, um, um, the um, Oh my god, the super foot and the button um, that normally back in the day was the major thing that you get in those sewing machines. The next question is how much you know about sewing machine? I think that's one of the best questions for it because how much you know about sewing machines at the beginning, it will determine uh, what kind of machines you really know that you might need buy something that you know by fact you're going to need no do not focus so much how much you, you will need eventually uh, because some people change some people they like sewing machine but they are not feeling the sewing machine as something they're gonna do as their profession they do it as more a hobby or something that they enjoy something that they like so you have to understand that kind of situation and you have to be honest to yourself um, how you want to go with this how far you want to go with this for example in my case i working my way to have my own company so i'm I working my way to have my own um, fashion house and things like that so for me because my goal is very specific I need to use industry standard so I can buy like these sewing machines I have in the back like they, they do keys sergers and things like that but this type of one which is table but I know that the quality of them is higher than a um, home sewing machines or a serger sewing machine I use this in these um, in this room because this room is, is smaller and it's my winter sewing area but my summer um, sewing area is my basement and that one have all the industrial sewing machines because that is the quality that is the standard of quality of the garment that I want to make so I need to have those machines so for me make more sense based on my knowledge based on my um, budget and where I want to go sewing 
by induced your sewing machines. In fact, I have three of them, different ones like um, straight, um, straight sewing machine. I do have a serger and I have a cover stitch machine, which eventually they're gonna show in all that to you guys. So basically that is the main questions that you have to keep it in mind. Um, like I say, it's going to be the use for it's going to be your budget. It's going to be how much you know about the sewing machines and how you're going to use it. And also uh, the space where you're going to put it. Because you can have a full um, induced sewing machine, but if you have a space to put it in your house, you know, that is something that might affect you. So you need to know all that. So now we're going to talk about the three that I think. It's going to be the best for you guys. I'm going to be for the most simple one. Um, I might read a little bit. I might put some videos in this area and I might put some pictures. So I'll just let you know that so that way you guys have a better idea of what I'm talking about. The first one that I'm gonna be talking about is the Brother XR 3240. This is the one that I start, that I bought on um, um, Costco. This is the one that cost me like $135, something like that. And I made a couple of videos already here. This one came with 140 build stitch on. Um, it, do, it, it came with a large table that you can um, do quilting. It came with um, seven point thick dogs. This one came with an LED. Um, it's completely computerized. This one also have the quilting motion. Um, I think it's a quarter that one. So uh, that one is really, really, really good for somebody who is starting. Um, I think that one it will give you everything that you need for a beginning. That one you can make also um, do um, um, button holes. You can put buttons with that. You can um, finish the edges. You can do a lot of stuff. You do have the up and down. Uh, needle which is very very um, needed for many students so I think this one is really really good for somebody who is starting since the beginning um, it's very lightweight it's not super heavy you don't have to carry a bunch of stuff because everything can be um, put together in their cover um, they have like a some pockets and you can put it inside that one is really really good for somebody who is starting now, if you work with lightweight fabric and medium fabric and you want to do bags and things like that and you need something more strong because the Brother RX um, 3240 is not really um, strong to handle heavy fabrics or make coats. So the next one that you can um, get is the Janome HD um, 1000. This one, I got this one because I was doing a coat um, and I was unable to get the buttonholes doing correctly for jackets and coats with a, um, the Brother RX. This one basically is one step up of this um, from the Brother and this one doesn't have so many stitches. I see this one as a working one, one less fancy but what you lose as fancy or stitches and things like that, you're gonna gain in power. This one can run over any type of material. I put 12 different layers of denning and this one glide over, run over like nothing. Like this one is a really, really dog. Um, like I say, it only have 14 stitches, have a um, four step buttonhole. A, um, have let me see um have reversible the bottom reversible um drop the feet if you need it the fig dog you can drop it um and after that it's pretty much standard um but the main thing with this one is is very strong so if you make letters leather material things and things about the nature i think this one is going to be the right one for you like i would recommend this one for any man who will start making 
bags, leathers, and things like that, heavy denim, and stuff like that, I will definitely recommend it to this one. The next one now is going to be for uh, fashion designer students who are more um, advanced in general and you want to meet um, standard quality from the industry, you do have two normally. Um, the Yuki TL 2010Q. There is a version new, older than this one. Um, you can get that one too. Um, but I prefer that if you can put the extra money, you can get this one. This is better than the old one. This one have the automatic threaded um, trimmer, have the extend, uh, thread extension scale, have a maximum control of the speed. You do have like a speed thing that you can up and down, but then can go, this machine can go from 200 to uh, 1500 stitches per minute, which you will be able to meet the standard from the Yuki um, DDL 8700 or the Yuki DDL um, 5500, uh, 5500, the 5500 one. This one, I like the Yuki TL because this is the one that I have here. This one basically, um, you do have everything that you need from the Yuki, the industry, the uh, heavy duty, the industry, industrial, um, industrial um, sewing machine. But you have that in a small size. You can carry with you. It's not as heavy as people think. You also have LED lights on this one. You do have control speed. You do have the automatic threader that you can use on the pedal or you can use on the button. You also can quilt in this one. You can use the um, the quarter and the five, uh, one five um, each quilting feet. You do have the lever, which is this one here. Basically, you can put it here and you can use it that way. This machine is really, really good. I will recommend these one students um, or anybody who really wanna go with industrial sewing machine but they don't have this space for it. I think this one will give it to you what you're looking for. Um, it does have a like a micro computer on it which help to control many different um, things on the on the machines but it's super simple I don't see it as a full um, computerized um, sewing machines like um, the 9000 series and things like that from the Yuki I don't see this one at that level um, but still is a really 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 good machine I compare this to the Yuki DDL 8700 but with a few features that you might want I think this machine in boats people who have boats they buy this machine so that way they can uh, fix the seal um, sail I think it is um, the fabric thing they use um, they use this for fix that or fix anything in the boat so it's really really good I see many men sewing in this one because it's so easy for them to understand this one now we go into the standard um, of the industry which is normally is the Yuki DDL 8700 or the 9000. The 9000 is the one that people right now are going through um, or moving forward to. Um, I have some issues with the 9000 uh, especially the full computerized one. I'll put the name here. They have the whole um, LED thing and touch because for some reason places have been working with them they have so many issues with the settings when they work they are the best one because you can cut your thread and, do, and sew in everything with a, with a pedal um, you can change so easy every single detail in machines with the um, LED panel but when they set up that thing wrong, it go crazy. Another thing with those one is those ones tend to have problem with the plastic bobbing. You need to you need to get the old metal uh, the old metal uh, bobbing in order for them to work nicely. Anyway, let's talk about the um, Juki DDL 8700. This one 
um, normally is, well, what it is, is a single um, lock stitch sewing machine. Normally you have self lubrication. Um, have two motors, you can choose either or, the servo motor and the clutch motor. If you wanna do close, you have to go uh, mainly with the servo motor because the clutch motor is going to be too powerful. It, it gives me many problems because that happens to me. Um, you do have the options to uh, adjust the um, RPM, uh, revolution per minute. You do have the dial that you can switch and change that. Um, that's really important because some people need more power for very specific fabrics. So, there's, so it's different um, elements in that sense. You do have the options to go up to five uh, millimeters, the stitch length, which is this one too, do the same thing. You do have the options to go to five. Um, and also you do have uh, provide a minimum of six stitch per each when you do this. It's capable to generate 5,500 stitch per minute. It uses standards um, and needles, so you can use the European st standards or the uh, American numbers, which is the 9 to, 9 to 18. Um, but still, you can use the same type of so, uh, the needle as long as they are industrial um, type of one. The table dimensions is 20 by 48 by 48. This is very important so that way you know exactly what you're getting into, what you can put in your house. So you need to know all that kind of stuff. You do have um, 11 inches arm, which is really good so that way you can put big pieces on there. And you do have the press foot lift at the bottom of the machine, I mean on the under the machine. So you could just push your leg on the side and the lift will up up to I think it's a quarter a half each so basically that is my um, information I can provide to you guys in conclusion depending on what you want to do um, sorry you can buy one of these machines if you are a beginner or just starting I will recommend you to a sewing machine that is less than $150 something like that so that way you can get your group you get your feeling of the machine if you're a person who is a little bit more advanced or working with heavy duty material, I would recommend you to go with a Janami HD 1000 or the Yuki, TT, uh, the Yuki uh, TL uh, 2010 or that series of the Yuki's which is really good um, for boats and things like that because of the size. Now, if you're a student of fashion and really go deep, going deep on this, or you really love to sewing and you think into sewing a lot, I would really recommend you to go with all them. <laughs> it's depending on where you go, but the TL um, and the DL 8700 is the goal to um, these kind of people who really want to be in the industry or somebody who want to go that way So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys really enjoy So please subscribe to my channel. I'm doing the give it away. I think it's uh, reach 10,000 subscriber I want to give it away a um, sewing machine. I think it's a machine. Let me tell you is a brother XL 26 I I'm going to give away that sewing machine. I already have it here waiting for you guys. So please continue subscribing. I'm back as you can see um, Just came from vacation. So thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful weekend